And hello everyone, welcome to Band of Blades, where apparently my music stopped looping. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Uh, well, uh, I'm really excited about this uh, this new game, this new show. Uh, we're going to be um, demoing a brand new game that uh, our, our amazing GM Strauss has, uh, has written, a hack of Blades in the Dark. Um, dark fantasy and he'll tell us all about it in a little while um, but in the meantime I just wanted to say hello to everyone uh, I'm Kelsa this is my channel uh, this is my face um, <laughs> uh, mostly I play role-playing games on the internet and so that's probably where you may have seen me before um, and uh, let's uh, let's go around and uh, introduce everybody else um, we'll go clockwise from me so that makes it eric eric uh hello say say hey, hey. And what's up and what you do and how have you been sure thanks kelsa hi everybody hi internet i'm eric aka eric vulgaris on on everything i'm an indie role-playing game fiend um i play a lot of games and um one of my major highlights from last year of all the games i played in 2017 was the uh beta testing of this at go play and so i have been nothing but absolutely thrilled and excited come back here and play some band of blades this just hits all the right feelings and i'm super excited so i'm, I'm so glad to be here yes uh Sith master this is not a one shot which is i think is the other thing i wanted to bring up which <laughs> i mean as soon as as soon as kelsa invited me here I, I with 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 this type of cast i was like sure when whenever let me let me let me make this a thing i have to play this so thank you so much for having me and um yeah back to you Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, so next around is uh, is um, blah, 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 blah. I have I have words. Alice. Hey. Hey. What's up? You're hi. In hello. The circle. I'm, I'm Alice. Also, Taff Cat on stuff. You can call me either. I don't really care. Um. Anyways, uh, I don't do much on the internet right now, mostly because I've been moving to Seattle over the past few months. So that's been that's been busy. Um. Otherwise, though, I play a lot of games, and most notably, I've been playing this game for a bit now. Uh, I've been doing a Tuesday game with Strauss in this game every other week, and I was in the Go Play game, and it's kind of my favorite game right now. We've been working on some fan stuff that we'll talk about later. So, like, I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, just, I'm really, really excited to talk more about this game with people. Not about it. Is that yeah. awesome? That brings us to Ginger. <laughs> yeah. Hi guys, I'm Xmas Ginger Ninja or Ging. Um, I play mostly video games, uh, some tabletop games here and there. Um, I've been playing a lot, uh, three different sessions of Blaze in the Dark, so I'm very excited to play something different. Uh, after looking through everything, it looks awesome, and I am super pumped. I am last, so I'm just gonna jump right in. Jump uh, in, do it. Hi everybody, I'm Strash. Uh, I am the designer of this game, uh, Band of Blades. Um, just to give you a quick overview of what you'll be watching, uh, somebody in chat described it correctly as Dark Fantasy XCOM, and that's actually correct. Uh, I've been a fan of Dark Fantasy for a very long time, and also Military Star Fantasy, so this is inspired by book series like um, the Malazan books or uh, the Black Company. Uh, so you'll be seeing a lot of military style Dark Fantasy stuff with a lot of horror elements. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped for this. I've been kind of <laughs> excited to do my first demo because uh, for a lot of you, this will probably be your first taste of it. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy. Back at you, Kelsa. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, ah, I'm making all the noises. I'm super good at this. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I mean... I think uh, I think we're ready to start talking about like what we're doing in characters, I guess. Um, most of us have made our characters except for me because I was I only half made my character. <laughs> Technically, they're jumped from the gun. There's a, a step in setting up the game that actually says <gasps> What? Well, I mean You were the only person actually following the rules. <laughs> Perfect. Then great. I thought I was just doing literally everything else with my life. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, why don't you take us through the rules of what we should be doing in what order? Cool. Uh, so uh, just to 
address the viewers for a split second. There are two modes of this game. Um, everybody is going to make a, a is going to pick a role because uh, the decisions of uh, the the legion, which is the the military unit that everyone is a part of, are governed by these like generals almost uh, like like people who have some like overarching responsibilities and decisions. And there are three required roles for every game and two optional roles. So um, I know everyone here has been so excited and everyone's already kind of decided what they want to do, but let's go through the steps. Um, uh, well, actually, there are technically four required roles. One of them is GM. So I have already chosen my booklet and uh, assembled my crew and done all of those steps. But um, the three required roles are commander, who decides where the Legion moves and what sort of missions the Legion will be looking to do. Uh, the quartermaster, who handles all of the Legion supplies and resources and kind of decides like what's sent on what mission and like when horses are used, that kind of stuff. Um, and the marshal, who controls... Uh, I'm sorry, I've got a very loving cat who definitely wants attention. Um, and uh, yeah, this is Nemo. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> he said he didn't want attention after all. Uh, but uh, the... he wants attention, but your attention, not our attention. Yes, apparently. Uh, but uh, the the last uh... Marshall. Marshall, thank you. The marshal uh, gets to decide who's in charge, is responsible for making all the engagement roles, and basically uh, handles all of the troop-related stuff. And the two optional roles, uh, which of which we'll only have one because this is a three or a four player game, uh, is the lore keeper and or the whisper, aka the spy master. So the lore keeper keeps the annals of the legion, sets a lot of the back at camp scenes, and gets to tell stories of the legion's past. You actually get some influence on the fiction because. Nothing in the game is true until we say in this game that it is. And then um, the other, the spy master actually has like kind of a mini game that they're playing against the GM where they're trying to find out the Broken's uh, true motives, which Broken's are bad guys, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and they basically like set up quests for the Legion, find out information and stuff like that. So, um, all right, you folks have to pick roles. Now I know that some have already been decided, but if you if you want to <laughs> discuss or choose or just let everyone know what it is, that'd be great. We're just gonna fight over it to the death, <laughs> BRB. <laughs> knife fight, <laughs> rusty knife. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think we all already had a pretty good idea of what um, overarching roles we wanted to do. Um, I'm doing commander. Nice. Uh, mostly just because I've like out of the four times I've played this game, I've played commander three times, so it's you know. It's nice and comfy. Nice. Uh, I'm going to play the quartermaster because I like keeping track of stuff. Like, I'm actually kind of excited to to, <laughs> to track supplies and, and make decisions based on that. Um, I was going to print out a, a copy of my role so that I'd have a physical piece of paper, one that I could mark up. But uh, then I ran out of time. So I'll be having that for next time. Uh, Eric, you're muted. You're still muted. <laughs> I was physically and software <laughs> bound from speaking, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be playing the good old Marshall, which is something I've never done before. Uh, I'm super excited to do. Nice. And uh, Ginge? I will be playing a Whisper, um, getting intel, being all around a creep, and I'm pretty excited about it. Real creep we don't have a lore keeper. Still I creep. love the lore keeper. <laughs> so excited uh, all right cool so now that we have our roles um each of these sheets has like a little like checklist that you're supposed to go through uh the only thing that i ask is uh marshall you're going to be um you're probably going to be last because one of your steps is have everyone make their specialists aka character sheets so uh uh just run through it until you get to that and um uh actually let's just Go through it real quick together is that okay sure all right so uh i'll do them in the order that i have here uh and please forgive me i've got i'm i'm a, I'm a read off the bullet points there might be some uh edits in the in the in the path here so um the commander is first uh no actually i'm lying marshall mm -hmm. yeah the marshal is oddly first i'll rearrange that in the finals uh so commander um you need to know where the Western Front is, which is going to be in our Roll20 screen and note it. Uh, we will actually do our first mission before the Western Front and then advance to it. Um, your starting pressure will be one, so note that somewhere. 
and your starting position, um, uh, you should tell me whether you're looking for assault or scout missions. Uh, that'll depend on the course of what happens a after this mission. That is totally fair. Uh, all right, cool. So that's the that's the commander setup. Pretty straightforward. Uh, quartermaster, uh, Kelsa, did you say you did print out a sheet or, or no, no? I was going to. Well, if you just want to make notes and then print one out during the break, oh, okay. <laughs> I got a oh, notebook because I'm I'm like I can't do this digitally. It's just not going to work for me. Uh, so so you're going to start with two supply. So go ahead and note that. Um, you're going to have. Uh, you're going to have to select a Mercy or an Alchemist as non-Legion personnel. Uh, for reference, uh, Alchemists uh, can perform alchemy, which is uh, kind of like a form of magic. They can transmute substances, set up wards, and do some other stuff. But alchemy at the moment is tainted, which means that they'll blight and corrupt out and die eventually. Um, Mercies are followers of Ostara, who is the goddess of healing, and they have the ability to take wounds from people onto themselves. And so they help the Legion heal a little bit faster. Um, well, I think I think probably starting with a healer is going to be helpful for long-term survival. So I'm going to go with that. Sounds great. Um, so you're going to start uh, always with one set of food stores, which gives you three charges, right? Like, so you have three basically like units of food siloed and prepared for travel. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to get to choose five boxes of non-personnel equipment. And this includes supply carts, as well as horses, religious supplies, which includes reliquaries and other things like that. Black shot, which is uh, used to fight the undead more strongly. It's what makes your assault missions go better. Um, laborers, which let you do long-term projects very well. And siege weapons, which are required for certain missions and help you at the end of the whole road. Okay. Uh, I think we should definitely have uh, an, at least one extra, like one supply cart. Excellent. Um, I definitely want an extra thing of black shot and one of religious supplies. Horses, I would also recommend. I was getting to that. Sorry, <laughs> I was excited. You're always excited. <laughs> I mean, it's good though. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with horses and you know what i'm gonna go with um another black shot because cool. i like Very aggressive. i i, I want to be aggressive i think be aggressive be, be aggressive. aggressive that's my plan is be aggressive cool sounds great all right next up um i'm gonna so quartermaster uh marshall's gonna be last commander is done let's do the whisper uh, so, uh, Ginge, uh, are you ready to, to pick some spies? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I have picked, I'm sorry if I butcher these names. <laughs> it's totally fine. Uh, Anyatin. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, in my second thing, I get to make one of them a master. So that's yeah. going to be the master. Um, and then the second one is Antoinette. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yep. So uh, <clears throat> for those of you watching, uh, the spy master gets a selection of spies. Um, and on Yetin's uh, ability is that they're better at spying on and sabotaging broken. And Antoinette is uh, an ex seamstress that's decided that being denied nobility at birth, she'll choose a different path for herself. And she is super great at recruiting and training uh, additional spies. She can, she can suss out who will make for a good spy. I think that's uh, I think that's a solid choice. Uh, cool. And then, uh, yep, you're good. Okay. So next, um, you can you can immediately set your spies to go on a mission, and they'll be doing that while we're playing out our our personal mission. Like we'll be playing out a unit doing stuff, but while we're doing that, the spies are out doing their thing. So um, your your different mission types are on the left. So do you have a, a particular one that you're interested in? Uh, I'd like to train Antoinette. Cool. So uh, just go ahead and we'll make a little eight clock for Antoinette. I'll, I'll put it on the roll 20 sheet for you. Okay. Um, and uh, I will do that here in a second. So that, and then do you know, uh, do you know what uh, Anyetin is off to do? 
Um, so she recruits and trains uh, mission trainer. Uh, so I guess she is. What would that be under for her to go out? Because all she does is really go out and find people and then train them, right? Correct. So what we're going to do is when you say Antoinette is off training someone, so so you'll get an additional spy when her clock completes. So she's off on that mission, but you have two spies. I, I wanted to know if you wanted to send Anyetan out to do something else. Yeah, to go to go find another one, I guess. Oh, a double recruit and train. Fascinating. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I dig it. Uh, cool. So I'll just uh, set up two clocks. Uh, near those we'll have all the spies. This will be great. No, that's, that's I want like cool. an army of them, and then they just go around stabbing people. That's totally a thing you can do. <laughs> or other things that spies do. Not all of them kill people. Yep. I mean, stab people, blow stuff up. Wow. Get awesome. resources. Uh, so you're going to start with a spy network, but you can also choose to get one additional advance in your spy network. So uh, do you have a preference here? Uh, your, uh, your, your options are acquisition, which allows you to get a third spy. Uh, deep cover, which is instead of dying, spies only get wounded when they're spying on broken uh, missions. And sources, which is all spies get plus one D on all uh, find resources missions. I'm going to do deep cover because, uh, awesome. you know, having that spy there's no point in going out and getting them if they're just going to die. <laughs> yep. Well, spying on broken is very dangerous and giving them a little bit yeah. uh, more protection is awesome. Okay, super cool. And finally, uh, last but not least, Eric, uh, you're hey. the marshal, so I'm going to step yeah. you through this real quick. Mm -hmm. Sure. I've been kind of playing along to getting prepared, so go ahead. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so your starting morale is set to seven. Yes. You're supposed to label all your squads. Yes. Wait, all 12 of them or just like two uh, right now? How many do you think I should recommend? Cool. Uh, cool. Squad one, in terms of like if there's an outline, not in terms of priority, is Vulture Squad. And squad two is Crow. Okay. I will fix that in roll 20 when I get a chance. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's see here. And then finally, uh, we're going to have each player make a specialist. Uh, you're going to note their names in the appropriate specialist column. And then you will make as many specialists as necessary to get to five, which means that you'll have to make one additional one. Oh, okay. So that's why I have a night. That's who I haven't made yet. Okay. Yep. Cool. So uh, does everyone want to talk about what they're going to make? Right. Uh, uh, I'll start because in, in terms of the order of specialists, officers first. So I will I will just quickly say that I made a, a character. Uh, I'm playing the officer class. Um, the best way to describe an officer here is that they're kind of, um, you know, lead... They kind of lead groups. They're more about supporting each other rather than being super special themselves. They kind of are so almost kind of like a bard where they kind of make other people better. Um, let me look for the words they actually use. That I don't know. I'm just one of the few surviving soldiers of the Legion. I wonder if I have a specific term for being just, an officer. Nope. Not yet. Okay. Uh, My XP trick. Uh, let's talk about what we really want to know. Our XP triggers. Um, I get go. XP if I survive the mission, if I help my squad through enforcing discipline or strategic planning. That is my playbook trigger. You you pretty much make right. the rookies not suck, which is what we yeah. really, really want. <laughs> okay. Just yell at us a bunch. We'll get it eventually. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I'll talk about what the mechanical choices when I actually make the mechanical choices. But anyways, <laughs> that's just so... Um, oh, let me tell you my actual character's name. Cause, like, that's probably important, right? All right, so... Um, the name that I settled on and the type of character, I, should, I don't know, should, should you explain the different backgrounds or should we avoid that right now? Uh, so how, how, how deep do you want to get into it right now? It's super, it's super straightforward. Cool. Um, I'm just going to give the, the high level overview. Yeah. Uh, cool. So each character in Band of Blades uh, has a heritage. It's where they're kind of from and sort of the culture that they were raised in. Uh, the majority of the Eastern Kingdoms falls into four uh, big kind of like areas. Uh, Barta or uh, Panya and Zemya. And so Bartons are um, huge, friendly, stoic, and vicious. Um, uh, Orites are noble, connected, vengeful, and stern. Uh, Panyar are cold, quick, shrewd, and strange. And the Zemyadi are tough, bold, loyal, and stubborn. And each of these keywords are things that you'll, you'll kind of get as these like 
little powers because that's where you're from and that kind of like influences who you are and how you act so cool yeah all right so cool so my officer um is named uh jai uh jai katu but he's most commonly referred to as just goat all right cool uh so jai katu uh means that he's barton right yes i am i am barton uh and uh, so nobody, well, very few people are every inch a Barton. So what, uh, do you yeah. know what two traits you picked? Yes. Uh, so I am friendly and vicious. Awesome. <laughs> this is real good. That's a, that's right. a, that's an interesting mix there. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I'm definitely, I mean, I'll let, I'll let everyone peek behind Eric's thought process here real quick. So you can see what I'm trying to do. Um, I definitely want to play this character as sort of that Sundare officer who is really mean and seems like he's a jerk, but really just loves his squad to death and wants to see them succeed and is so afraid. So he pushes them really hard. Awesome. Uh, and do you know what power you're starting with? No, I actually haven't. Um, I'm kind of I thinking thought... about the mission, tr the mission one where if someone dies, I get experience. Oh, wow. Uh, Harsh. <laughs> I want to level up real quick. Sorry. That's true. That's true. Yo, uh, getting XP triggers early on is a. Uh... Yeah, that's a thing uh, for sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, cool. So, um, who wants to go next? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm pretty cool going next actually because. Sure. So oh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alice. Just real quick. Um, yes. I'm thinking about that one. I haven't I haven't settled on it yet. Like, so come back like... to me. Okay. Um. Also, Barton, uh, I'm Varda Zolshi. Uh, I actually think that my character and Eric's might know each other because, well, he is the goat. I am the ram. Uh, oh. I'm playing the heavy. Oh. Uh, so uh, I think I think we probably have some form of relationship there. Um, but essentially, my job is to be big and take on and just swing a big sword. That's that's my job. My job is to be the shield that the fucking undead break upon. Uh, so that's that's my job. Um, I'm uh, taking huge and stoic, uh, meaning while like these people are probably like, I'm, I'm picturing she's at least like six, five, like, and then in heavy armor, tower shield, like just enormous. Um, and then for abilities, I'm probably gonna take mule, which ups my, uh, my load on everything, which uh, huge already does. So like my heavy load is like 10. So I'm just gonna like I. She looks like she just bench presses the house with all of your extended family in it, right? Like it's it's ludicrous, and I'm I'm really excited for her. Awesome, that sounds super great. Um, Ginge, Kelsa, do you guys have characters? Sure, here? Um, I'll go. I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, gonna be a scout, um, and my name is um, Karia. Um, I already forgot how, that, how I was going to say this. Um, Vyakiovich. Yeah. Yes. That works. Um, Vyakiovich. That's it. There's, like there's it. so many vowels in the middle there. Um, and I am... Um, I, can't, I can't even read right now. Um, Zemyadi. And uh, my traits are tough. So I ignore one level of harm penalties. And bold... I get plus one die to resist desperate actions. I'm also a daredevil, so I gain plus one die when making desperate actions. So, seems like I might be getting into some desperate situations. And so as a scout, I'm probably going to be traveling alone, which leads to being ambushed by um, some undead and maybe desperate actions there. Sounds great. <laughs> um... All right, cool. Very, very uh, Daredevil Scout taking some risks. Sounds great. Uh, Ginge, uh, do you know what you want to play? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to be playing a sniper. Uh, so while you're in the front getting chased by enemies, I'm going to try to pick them off and maybe help. Hopefully. Uh, I like to sit in the back uh, with, I have one mechanical eye, which is my ability. Yes. Um, so that I can have uh, better targets and identify uh, supernatural forces. So I got you. Um, my XP triggers are if I survive and uh, if I can lead them through observation or key shots, uh, and if I bring in my heritage or my traumas. Awesome. Oh, I forgot my XP trigger as a scout. Um, surviving is the same, um, heritage and trauma and such. Um, but 
um, as a scout specifically if I help my squad with stealth or foresight. That's how I earn XP. So the cool thing is we all gain XP if we survive because surviving actually is not except, guaranteed. <laughs> except, except Eric, who also gains XP if we die. Yes, as long as he um, doesn't die. Uh, <laughs> I mean, also... No, like, I mean, I still get XP, but I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very clear. It doesn't <laughs> help you because you're dead. <gasps> kitty! Yeah, I I'm sorry. It. This is Zhij. Hi, Kitty. Mm. Uh, heavy scan XP no. off of helping the, uh, helping the Legion through might or fortitude. So. Hold on. Um, let, me, let me talk about this real quick. Theoretically, <laughs> theoretically speaking, if we were to take fatal harm, and I would die... At the end of the session, though, I would have accrued enough experience to take an advancement. And I've taken an advancement, say a heavy, that reduces harm by one level. Would I still be alive? This is actually no. really important. No, no you <laughs> Okay. All Sorry. right. This is not long Damn it. where you can Am take I... the cool move and survive. I'm after. just not, I'm not dead, just left right. behind and have to rejoin the group. Okay, cool. All right, just that's to fair. Get this straight, we have like all the pieces on the fake little battlefield, and you're lining us up for the most to just one shot to kill all of us so you can get. <laughs> So you love he also has a um, speed trigger. So from he's got the, a little yeah. ram, he's got a little person Remi down with a sniper. He's just like remind <laughs> me after this game, I will tweet out a black adder clip that pretty much summarizes our strategy. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll get it by then. You'll, I've it's, already it's, I've it's already got game. an idea considering it's a black adder clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, Eric, would you like to tell us who the final, the fifth specialist is? Uh, since everybody else is making their character, you have to make two. Yeah, um, here's my question for you. Is is what is, so there were some questions uh, uh, that were laying around. I think we got, I forgot to actually ask you. Is soldier a valid playbook for a player or is no. it uh, it's an enhanced rookie thing, right? It's an enhanced rookie. It's a veteran Okay. Rookie. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, then I think. Hmm? Oh, I was gonna, it's a thing we can play. Just not start on. Okay. I think then we're going to... I think we're going to... Do I grab a medic just to round out the group? I think we should probably should grab a medic. All right. As a marshal, I'm declaring we're grabbing a medic. Um, I need to make this character, and I haven't thought about them at all. It's all right. So, we, we won't push you on the spot and have you yeah. talk us through it. We'll just know that so, you're doing that. Yeah. So while you're doing that, um, I'm going to start talking about the next part that we have to do. So one of the things that's um, unique about the Legion is the fact that they travel with, um, it's a, it looks like a person, uh, it's called a Chosen. Uh, so one of the things to know about this world is that when there is a threat that humanity itself cannot handle on their own, um, there is a, a, a process by which uh, basically a person becomes like a, like a, body embodied avatar of a god and then usually they go out and they handle the thing so for example if two nations are fighting in a war gods don't show up they don't care but if some sort of supernatural dragon shows up and starts like burninating the countryside there is a chance that at one of the temples somebody will get infused with this divine essence and will go out and slay the dragon uh chosen usually expire quickly after their task is uh accomplished um but this has been happening forever. And uh, just to give you context, one to two chosen have appeared uh, in general across time. Uh, when the Cinder King um, and his undead armies crossed into Aldermark, um, uh, nine chosen were created in one go. Um, so the humans absolutely stunned, uh, you know, marched with them and everything. But uh, there's a, a disastrous battle three years ago and then humans tried to rally and repush after they invented black shot, but which kills undead very efficiently. Um, and uh, this latest offensive, they threw everything they had remaining and they lost. So as I mentioned, the Legion started a thousand strong um, about a year ago, they crossed uh, into Aldermark and they had a huge battle against the Cinder King. And currently you're at about 55, but one of the chosen survived and is with the Legion. And as the GM, I get to choose which one it is because it like keeps the campaign a little bit and like it gives you guys like a little bit of, of powers and, and kind of an impetus, which we'll, we'll go through. Uh, but the chosen that you have is Alana. Uh, she is uh, the chosen of Astara, who is the goddess of healing and mercy. Um, and uh, she is 
stern. Uh, she's known to be like tactically minded. She doesn't speak much. She spends a lot of nights staring towards the undead. Uh, you know that she hates them viciously and she does not stand for signs of blight or corruption in camp. So those are, those are facts that you know about Alana. Um, so uh, I'm going to basically uh, choose some of her features, but you as a, as a group uh, get to pick uh, what is her favor, which is like how she, uh, if you guys do missions that are in tune with your like divine mandate, uh, then she levels up. Um, and uh, you also get to choose what power she grants the Legion as a whole. So let's, let's just do that together real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. The three favors that Alana grants are, uh, the, the three favors that she can choose from are holy, mystic, or uh, mercy. So holy missions are usually ones that involve the trappings of religion. So it's like protecting pilgrims, uh, recovering artifacts of religion, that kind of thing. Uh, mystic missions are ones that actually deal with the supernatural effects in the world. Um, so like if there's like weird juju or like some kind of like old empire tech or whatever, it's usually a mystic mission. Um, and uh, mercy missions are usually ones where you are protecting people or saving people. So like they're, they're missions of mercy, right? Like, like if there are people that are pinned down and you go and you rescue them, that's a, that's a mercy mission. Uh, do you guys have a preference? Well, I'm not going to be the ones making any decision about what missions we take. Uh, I mean, at least not officially. Um, but my vote is for Mystic just because I think Mystic missions would be really cool and that would give us impetus to take them. So I'm, I like Mystic. Yeah. I do. I'm trying to decide because I know like, I don't... Mm, I'm, I'm thinking ahead a little bit. Sorry, yeah, continue. I know. I don't, I don't know if this is too far ahead, but can you talk about the different rewards for different missions? They're they're not they're tied to the actual mission itself. It's not tied to okay. the kind of keyword. Okay. Uh, the keyword just means uh, so when Strauss rolls up missions, he yeah. can roll up different types, and the, if one of these pops up, that means just this mission is important to us. We could end up rolling a Mystic mission and still doing it. It just doesn't give us special benefits for doing um, it because we didn't pick it. Let's talk about. I mean, the the grittiest way and and probably the. The, the coldest way of looking at this would be like, what's everybody's best resistance role? <laughs> uh, oh. uh, uh, that is the darkest way of doing it. I'm strange, so I have plus 2D to uh, resist corruption. Hell yeah, let's do Mystic. I'm that weird girl that sits in the back and doesn't uh, talk to I will, I will, however, you point out... People, so let's not do Mystic. <laughs> I will, however, point out, uh, if you're if you're thinking about it that way, Alana does not like corruption. Taking, like, three corruption will piss her off enough to be scared. Uh, in general, corruption. Uh, so, corruption is like a, a type of stress mechanic, except you don't really lose corruption. Uh, maybe you can do a long-term project or something like, but it's outside of the scope of the base rules. Um, so, corruption adds up over time, and when you get enough of it, you get blight. And blight signs, uh, like first at first, like it's like rotting of your body or like mutations, and then like. Uh, as it advances, uh, like it becomes more and more grossly apparent, and eventually it starts like influencing your perceptions. Eventually, turn into a horrible blight monster and try to kill your friends. Uh, cool. So, corruption bad, but like very few people can sense corruption. A blight once it starts manifesting, that's usually where where people step in. And when, if you have blight one, you might try to like hide it. <laughs> so, but once uh, it gets advanced, it's impossible to hide. I would actually like to vote for mercy. Okay, so I've got two votes for Mystic, one vote for Mercy. Eric? Mercy. Ooh, split decisions. Oh, no. Uh, I could be swayed to Mercy um, because uh, that seems look, like a good way to maybe uh, expand our... Here's... Let me... I, I, I can make a case for why, if you can be okay. persuaded. All right, all right. I need some... Um, uh, here's send, why. Send me the... Send me the I'm uh, taking mission. I'm taking... I'm taking mission first as my special ability, adding the XP trigger for when people die, which means people are going to be hurt more often in the missions that I choose and going to be a little bit more hurt and just, you know, beaten up a little bit when we come back. Having additional mercies to alleviate that seems like a pretty good idea. So, uh, well, that's not hold the on. Can, can, I, can, I be, can I be honest real quick? Like, is, is me taking mission first actually going to be a problem for everybody no. if I do this? No, okay. it is it dying. Having characters die is very bad for us, though. We would like yeah, to do everything nukes morale. Not yeah, die. But, right. Uh, but if rookies yeah. die, though, it's different. Is that no. different no. than skill hits morale? 
still I know. Around. That's fine. It's still okay. bad. It's still That's bad. fine. That's okay. Uh, uh, Jin, you look. were going to say? I was so funny. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, going to be... He's already planning everyone's death in her entire thing. <laughs> Have a plan to kill everyone you meet, Ginge, okay? <laughs> Listen, I don't give a shit. Uh, no, no, I'm... you here minding my own business. I'm my, The reason I wanted to go with the Mystic one is because I just want to kill really high-level targets because that's how I level up. So, yeah. like... You will do that regardless of what you can. If you let I me come right. back and use them as bait so. so I can kill targets. I promise you will kill many a big thing regardless of what you pick. Like that, that is, is not an issue. That is the sniper's role. Right. She's, she's like, fine, just so, <laughs> give me something to shoot. I'm I'm all about it. Um, so I'm, I'm all about the medic then. If everyone's cool with me having that extra trigger, look, I'm not going to try to kill a lot of people. And I'm really just thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about being a little bit more of like a Poe dameron you know, like at the start of The Last Jedi. Um, yeah. You know, like, like and let's do this thing. Um, let's do it, this really crazy, stupid mission. Look, okay. Yeah. I think, uh, I think I have a bad name to myself and i'm looking that i'm at early on i'm very eager like i'm like the butcher or something like that because i lead a lot of people to, to death but like i also but i only it's i only got that name because we failed our mission and so if we can succeed the mission it'll, it'll pay off and so i need to i need to prove that uh how you know despite how toxic that sounds so i'm hearing once you level up enough you're like no it's okay i'll stop killing people now now, now, now yeah <laughs> yeah because then Exactly, because then if it inevitably happens, I still get experience. Right? Well, it's gonna happen gonna... regardless, is what you mean. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. is gonna happen. Other Look, triggers, uh, it's a hedge. It's a hedge. You have other that. experience triggers, so it's not like you're not gonna level unless everyone dies. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it's stress. Just... Uh, you were talking about. Uh, you were gonna say something earlier. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Uh, while it's delightful to talk about your officer and their future plans to murder everybody, um, we do need to decide on a favor. So I just wanted to like. I'm good with mercy. Train back over a little bit. All right, yeah. let's take mercy. We'll take mercy. Mercy? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So cool. I'm noting mercy. And then uh, I can tell you that your chosen is uh, radiant and fearsome. That's her. Yeah. Traits. Um, oh, like staring at the sun too long. <laughs> she seems a little more real. Uh, than the rest of the world around her, almost like she's somehow more present in a way that is difficult to describe. She's hard to look at for long times. Um, all right, cool. So you folks have to choose uh, a chosen ability. So I'm just going to read through them real quick, and then we'll pick one. Um, the first one is so cool. the the first one is a star is blessing. Uh, whenever a legionnaire resists corruption or any corrupted power, they take plus one d to do it. Uh, a star is tears. When you burn your dead and mourn for them, you gain a profound sense of peace. Liberty campaign actions provide plus one morale. Um, a star is mercy. When the Legion recuperates, uh, each specialist can place one additional healing tick. Um, she gets into the healing mechanics, but it basically means that you'll be able to recover and go on missions more frequently. Um, blood of the Chosen. Uh, if you spend one religious supply uh, on a mission, uh, in addition to any other effects, um, Alana also will bleed on weapons. Uh, she'll, she'll put her black blood upon them and they count basically like black shot weapons to gain potency against undead because your blood's toxic to them. Mm. Um, the Book of Hours, uh, all specialists will start with two additional ability dots so you'll, or action dots, so you'll actually get two more like skills to play around with. Uh, War Saint, uh, the Quartermaster may select a training campaign action. Each specialist may then mark one resolve XP. And Battle Saint. Whenever Alana takes the field, uh, she counts as a threat five opponent, gains potency against all uh, all other troops. So. I have recommendations, if you'd like to hear them. I don't know, Alice. Uh, I'm, You've got opinions about a lot of things. I do. I've, I'm open. Very, sorry. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, you, go oh. ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, Astraea's Tears, Astraea's Mercy, or uh, what's it called? Uh, Blood of the Chosen would be my three recommendations. Uh, so, <clears throat> with a leaning democracy. Who, real quick, who chooses downtime actions? Quartermaster. Master. Okay. Um, what does liberty give you? Uh, stress rec recovery and some morale. And some? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to look for it. It's two or four based on whether you supply it or not. I have a dumb mm -hmm. okay. question. Mm -hmm. I'm a Go ahead. There, there are no dumb questions. What does the morale do for you as far as like mechanically? 
So morale has uh, two major effects, one of which is uh, the amount of campaign actions that the quartermaster gets to do. So a campaign action might be like rest and recovery. So the whole legion takes some time off and gets some like medical treatment and stuff like that. That's a downtime action. If your morale is high, you get two free ones. If your morale is kind of in this big middle range, you get one. And if your morale is really low, you just don't get free actions. You have to spend supply to get them. Um, the other thing that morale governs is um, uh, camp activity. When you when, yeah, when you get back to camp, the kind of like scenes that you're going to play through. That's more role play, more squishy, but like it's not like mechanical. But it is one of the things that morale governs. Okay. Okay. Can you give me those suggestions again? Uh, so I, I have first recommendations for tier, uh, Australia's tears to keep morale up, uh, which is always nice. Uh, Australia's Mercy, just to get our specialists in the field more often, which is really handy. And then Blood of the Chosen, because I'm playing a heavy, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, my vote's for Mercy as well, because I really think if we can just like make sure we don't die. <laughs> or like you oh, know if we can, tables have turned <laughs> i know well i mean if we can just make sure i'm sorry so like if somebody ends up dying that sucks but usually what that means is if, if i'm imagining the, the scenario where if, if, if they we died, die on the mission on. then that's xp if they make it home we want them to to heal up so they can go on the next mission they can almost exactly to almost die again so you get it you you get you get the idea is that yeah. like look if someone's dying that means everyone else is probably at like level three harm too which means we need them to be able to like get back on their feet again uh, which is why I think it would be better to have healing. I'm I'm down with healing. I like healing. But like once again, I don't want to be the like the sole deciderer of things. Like, but if we do the one for morale, couldn't we do healing as one of the downtime? Uh, yeah, sort of. So couldn't we that's just a that's a really good point. Get, let's say you uh, get well. We we still have to take the downtime action of to to exactly. recuperate with the with a star as mercy. We get an additional healing tick on everybody when we do that. So right. it makes the it makes the healing far more effective and you never get more than two free actions. Okay. Um, All right. Um I'm down for either that I don't care. Other idea we ch we go with book of hours. We select insight and we freaking resist with insight on everything. Uh uh it's per character. So when you make your character you just get two free dots. Yeah. You can choose whatever resistance. I know, but if we all, that means if we had to resist insight because we planned better, um, you know, or resolve or something. Like if we're no, I don't know. That's another Book of idea. Hours is super fun. I admit, I'm tempted. I, right. It's just playing a little on hard mode. Let's do uh, tears. I like tears. You're right. Between all the, all the options, Ginge, you've convinced me I think tears is the better option. More morale. I don't yeah. Now I don't remember which one's like the worst. I'm having a <laughs> Yeah. If they die, I'm like, uh, the just keep. Like right. Just keep. Game. Just the, it's more important. I remember from from my limited experience that having a high morale is really good. So high um, morale is really good. I will. If I will. if we're gonna edge to death here all the time, I feel like having that extra morale ability might not come in handy if we actually do really well. But if we're doing really well, then we're doing really well. Uh, <laughs> Speaking as a designer, just for a little yeah. bit of advice, and I don't know if this is going to affect anyone. Um, right. A star is uh, tears is going to be less useful early because you start at a relatively high morale, but it's going to be critical for recovery after you roll poorly and some missions fall apart and you get really bad morale. All right. My more recommendation um, is to get mercy and then tears later if we can. Okay. I'm down with that. I think that right. makes Done. sense. Done. Let's play. All right. Cool. Uh, so just kidding. This is play. No, actually, we're done now. Uh, I have made my choices. You folks have made your choices. All the characters are made, and uh, the next step is going to be to jump into game. So, um, do do you guys want to take a break and then start the mission afterwards? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that uh, since we're we're not quite at the hour, but it doesn't make sense to to jump in because that's 